Hey guys, we are going to do chapter um, two, all right? Now you might need a calculator. I'm going to open a tab, Norm CDF, um, and those work pretty good, right? You're also welcome to check out a calculator if you want one. All right, so question number two says, four statistics are being considered for each estimating a population characteristic. The statistics are as follows. Which of the following statistics would be the best one? All right, an unbiased with a standard deviation. So let's say I took some data as height and I got uh, the average height of 67 inches and the standard deviation is 0 0.03. So I'm pretty accurate plus or minus 0 0.03, right? Then a bias, okay, bias means maybe I was consistently higher or consistently lower. So that means this is the truthful height, but maybe I took the height of people with their shoes on. So it's actually not accurate, it's consistently higher. And so, but um, the variation is still the same, you know, the width of my data. So which of these would be the best one to use? We would much rather use an unbiased sample, right? We'd prefer unbiased, which means any biased sample we don't like, because that means it's consistently higher or consistently lower. So we're gonna, we're gonna cross these out, right? And then, a standard deviation of 1.3. So we still like A, but imagine we took a height sample and the, and the height was much more spread out. Again, if we're trying to predict the average height of a person, we like one the best, and that's what they said. One is the best, so we're gonna pick A. One is the best because it's accurate meaning it's unbiased, and it has minimal deviation. We want to have the minimum variability as possible if we're trying to predict the average outcome of something. All right, now we're going to do questions 8, 10, 22, and 35. 8. It says, while attending a 10-year high school reunion, Chester ran into his old friend Gary, who immediately talked about his new job in NYC. Even though Gary and Chester both became accountants, Gary makes more money. Gary says his salary was a thousand, and Chester felt embarrassed because his salary was only eight thousand, eighty thousand. Now I will say that this is very, very true to life. You can make more money than another person, but still be poorer because of the um, standard of living in that city. You'll end up spending a lot more. So creating a z-score would be a better way to compare since you're kind of comparing apples and oranges. So it says Chester's wife did some research and found that the average salary in New York was 8,000. So he is making more than, than an average salary. So again, if we go like this, the average salary was 80,000. Where would he be? He's making 100,000. And this is Chester. And it says the standard deviation is eight, so 80,000, and the standard deviation is 8,000. Well, the average salary for an accountant in Chester's hometown, so, oh, I got that wrong. She did some research and found the average salary of the New York person. All right, so the New York person is Gary, so let's make sure we got that straight. And Chester, what can we expect from Chester? It says his average salary in his hometown was only 60,000. So notice he's making 80. Notice he's making 80. So both of them are making above average incomes. So who's a better paid? Both above average. So this one is 60. And the standard deviation is 5,000. So to compare, we need a z-score. And uh, we do this with the formula A minus P over S, right? So Gary's z-score was his actual salary, 100,000, 
minus his predicted salary. We'd predict he should have made 8,000. That's how much an average person does. And we divide by the standard deviation, which is 8,000. So we get 20,000 divided by 8,000, which is, let me get out my calculator. Two point five. So Gary's Z score is two point five. I've eliminated A, B, and C. Now it's a. Now I'm. I have to figure out what Chester's. So Chester's is his actual minus predicted over the standard deviation. So Chester's actual salary is eighty. We predict for him to make sixty. That's how much an average person in his city makes, and his standard deviation is five. So we find it's 20,000 divided by 5,000. That's four. So Chester is actually making more money, even though he's not making more money. <laughs> he should be prouder uh, because his uh, Z score is four. He's four standard deviations of, above the mean. So he's really a high paid worker in his area. All right. For our next question, we go to question number 10. It says the distribution of weights in a fish in a lake is approximately normal and centered at two. All right. And I don't know the standard deviation just yet. Oh, I have to solve for it. Okay. It is known that 15% of the fish are larger than three pounds. So 15% of the fish are larger than three pounds. So they're saying this is 15, the area under the curve, larger. Notice that's why I went to the positive. So that tells me that I know the area under the curve to the left has to be 85% of, of fish are lighter. So can we find this standard deviation? Absolutely. Okay. So Z is um, A minus P over S. The actual is three, right? The predicted is two. Over the standard deviation, we don't know. So we're gonna solve for our standard deviation. Our z-score, we can find this in table A. What is the z-score when the area under the curve to the left is 0.85? Um, okay, so we're just gonna open Google. And Google AP stats. Formula sheet. Okay, we go to the formula sheet and on our table A, the area under the curve is 0.85. So we look for the number 0.85 in the body here. We're getting close. Okay, there's a number that's close, 0.8508. So the number 0.8508 is a z-score of 1.04. Okay, so we know the z-score is 1.04. That's the z-score that correlates to uh, 0.85, right? Now, we solve this equation. So we have 1.04 is equal to 3 minus 2 over the standard deviation. We do the Lynch swap, and our answer is 1 divided by 1.04. So in a calculator, 1 divided by 1.04 is 0 0.96, 0 0.96. So our answer is D. Now, can we double check this or can we work, since we have our choice, can we work it backwards? Absolutely. So if you go to inverse normal, it asks for the area under the curve to the left, the mean and the standard deviation. So we think our answer is 0 0.96. So the area under the curve to the left is 85%. And the mean we know is two, and the standard deviation we believe is this, and you should get an answer. Um, of three, that's this location, all right? You could also use norm CDF to check your answer. Our lower bound is a really low number. 
our upper bound is three, our mean is two, and we think the standard deviation is 0 0.96. And if we get our answer, it should give us this area under the curve to the left, 0.85. All right, question number, what's next? We're looking for chapter two questions. Chapter two, chapter two, here's one. In trying to describe the weight of the dinosaur in her fifth grade class, Ms. Clinton decided the dinosaur weight in terms that children would understand. She researched it and found that trian tri tri trianosauruses found out their weights were approximately normal with a mean of seven and a half tons and a standard deviation of a half of a ton. Which of the following is correct? Okay, so we know that this rule, 68, 95, 99.7 rule, states that 68% are with one within one standard deviation. 95% are within two standard deviations. And almost all the data, 99.7, are within three standard deviations. So they're talking about about 70%. So they're just kind of rounding this number here. So we know that about 75% of our Tyrannosauruses are within one standard deviation, which is 0.05. That means I do 7.5 plus a half, I get eight. 7.5 minus a half, I get seven. So that tells me that I know that about 70% of Tyrannosauruses were between seven and eight tons, right? And so now we just have to find which answer describes that. And that's our choice D. About 70% of our Tyrannosauruses are between nine and 10 because our standard deviation is a half of a ton. And 68 is around 70% of our data. Okay, 22, chapter three, chapter, still looking for chapter two. Here's another chapter two. Suppose the number of dandelions in one acre of grass is approximately normal. With a mean of 750 and a standard deviation of 80. Approximately what percentage, that's just asking the area under the curve, is between 590 and 910. Most of us did this in class. They're asking for the area under the curve between. So we do norm CDF, lower bound, 590, upper bound, 910, mean 750, standard deviation 80, we end up giving an answer here of around 0.9. There we go. Could we have done this without a calculator? And my answer is actually yes. These are precisely two standard deviations above. So 750, add 80, and add another 80. So adding two standard deviations I end up getting 910 and subtracting two standard deviations, I end up getting 590. So it should come as no surprise using the 68, 95, 99.7 rule that, um, that that is my answer because that's two standard deviations to the left and to the right. Got it? Cool. Okay, I think that's all for chapter two. Let's just double check, make sure we did them all. Yep, two through 35. Check out the next video for more ways to study.